When we start with the Gospels, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we are aware, of course, that these are the books that tell us the story of Jesus. Without the Gospels, there is no Gospel. Without the Gospels, there is no New Testament. There is no Christianity. But maybe we miss the point if we say without the Gospels, there is uh, nothing of this. The real point is that without the person they tell us about, there is none of this. Without Jesus, there is no gospel because the gospel is the good news of his coming to this earth and sacrificing himself for our sins and his being raised that we might have the hope of resurrection. We are aware that each of the gospels gives us a slightly different picture of Jesus as though you have photographs each taken from a different angle. Matthew, for example, emphasizes especially Jesus as our king and as the one who fulfills the promises of the Old Testament. John, on the other hand, emphasizes Jesus as the eternal Son of God. But all together, they present us Jesus, who is the focus of our faith and of all of the rest of the New Testament. How he became flesh and dwelt among us, being born of a virgin. How he was presented to the nation by John the Baptist. Behold, the Lamb of God. How he was baptized by John and shortly after that, driven into the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan. After returning from the wilderness, he began to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. He showed the power of that kingdom in his miracles. And we might in our minds start kind of ticking off the various miracles that displayed the power of that kingdom. He showed the nature of that kingdom in his teaching and perhaps we think especially of his teaching in the Sermon on the Mount, that it was a kingdom unlike any kingdom this world had ever seen in which the high and mighty would rule, but it would be a kingdom in which the proclamation would be blessed are those who were poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. But as he taught and presented the kingdom, eventually the very people to whom he came, the very people among whom he had grown up, the very people that God had prepared to bring him into this world rejected him. He was rejected by the Jewish leaders, ultimately crucified. Those leaders unwittingly fulfilling the very purpose in his coming, that his life might be a sacrifice for our sins. Indeed, he had identified that as the purpose of his coming. Because in him, we have a revelation of God and God's plan of salvation. That he himself is the Father's sacrifice for our sins. Likewise, the passage of Matthew chapter 20, and verse 28. Jesus himself said, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. And I think one of the points that we sometimes miss about the Gospels, these four Gospels, we think of them as telling us about the life of Christ. We say, what's a book that tells you about the life of somebody? We say, it's a biography. And so we say, there are four biographies of Christ. But they're really not biographies, at least not in the sense that we normally think of a biography. A biography attempts to give a you know, fairly overall picture of somebody's life. The Gospels, frankly, tell us about only really about 10% of Jesus' life. And of course, even there, it's very selective. My point is, if you read the Gospel accounts, you find out a, a, a bit about the circumstances of Jesus' birth. But then, from the time that he is born, until the time he begins his public ministry when he's about 30 years old, the Gospels basically just skip over all of that. The vast majority of Christ's life on this earth is just skipped entirely by the Gospels. We have one incident when he was about 12 years old. He went up to the temple with his parents and got separated from them. Other than that, we don't have anything until he begins his public ministry being introduced by John the Baptist. And so, well, they, they focus on Jesus' public ministry, that three years of Jesus' public ministry. And it is certainly true that they devote a great deal of time to that, that that's when we began to pick up the main story. And we learned these things that we were just talking about. But even there, if you look at each one of the Gospels, proportionately, they really don't even focus on the three years of his public ministry. Most of the Gospels spend anywhere from a fourth to almost a half of the Gospel dealing with the last week in the life of Christ here on this earth. But you look at the Gospel of Mark. Mark has 16 chapters. Of those 16 chapters, by the time you get to chapter 11, Jesus is making his triumphal entry for the last week. In the Gospel of John, 
when you get to chapter 12 out of the 21 chapters, Jesus is making his triumphal entry to Jerusalem. And you find similar situations in Luke and Matthew as well. My point is, the Gospels basically tell us not the story of Jesus coming to teach here on earth, not the story of Jesus coming to perform miracles here on this earth, but of Jesus coming to offer his life as a sacrifice for our sins. And that's where the concentration of each one of them really is. That's where we get all the information. That's what he really came to do. Everything else was prelude. Everything else was introduction. And that's the gospel. The gospel is not that Jesus came and taught the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is part of the overall picture of the gospel. The gospel is not that Jesus came and taught in parables or performed miracles. Those are wonderful and they're part of the overall picture. But the good news is that the Son of God who died for our sins on the cross that we might be forgiven and he was raised on the third day. The Gospel of Luke chapter 24 and picking up in the first verse it says on the first day of the week early at dawn they came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened that while they stood perplexed about this, behold, two men suddenly stood near them in dazzling apparel. And as the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was still in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day raised again. And they remembered his words. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the good news. That's the basis of our hope. And that's the basis of all of the rest of the New Testament.